Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tim Dillon Show. I just got back from Romania. I want to thank the gentleman that paid me a sum of money to perform at his birthday party. Uh, and God bless him. Uh, the audience didn't speak English. And many of the people there were heavily intoxicated, but they did see a mentalist and a fireworks show, several uh, um, Romanian musical acts that were lovely, and me, after all of that, for no money, uh, no, for a good amount of money for me, but uh, all the people that uh, came, it's free. It's a birthday party. So you got a lot for that in uh, Romania, which everybody was telling me when I left, they were like, you got, you have to be careful. Romania is, is Eastern Bloc, so old ex-Soviet country, Eastern Europe. It is dangerous. It's really, really fucked up. It's safer than LA. It's safer than New York. It's actually, one, it's, I felt safer there than I've like ever felt anywhere. There were no tents, no homeless people. There was like one old homeless guy. It was kind of cute. Like, you remember when homelessness was cute? You know, it was like a guy who would do a jig and people would throw change at him. Like, that's the kind of homelessness in Romania. There was nothing like what you have here. There were no tent cities. Nobody was like, you know, you weren't seeing the society just crack apart in front of you. Yeah, the buildings are old. Some of them are really pretty. A lot of them are, uh, there's some wear and tear. And, you know, the attitudes towards sexuality are a little different. You know, if the cab driver there will get you a hooker, like women are, you know, there is it's an entrepreneurial activity when you go out. Um, um, But, you know, we have that here. But there it's like very, you can feel it. Um, But safe, not something where you're like, I can't believe it. Like I was thinking I was going to be walking down the street, there were going to be like uh, gypsy beggars, people lunging at me. All of the things that you think about are actually in Los Angeles. They're not there. They're actually here, not there. So I feel ignorant and stupid because we've all seen the movie Hostel with Eli Roth, my director friend, who we're friends, but I'm a little, he's a little into sharks right now. Eli Roth keeps talking about saving sharks all the time. And it's like, Eli, do they care about you? Uh, but I love Eli Roth. And Hostel is about Bratislava, which is not in Romania. I don't know where it is. It's in Serbia, Czechoslovakia. Who cares? The point is, it feels like that's the vibe. You think it's going to be people are getting drugged, and then you wake up in like an abandoned factory, and people are operating on you. You lose a liver. It's not like that at all. It's everybody smokes cigarettes. Everybody likes each other. From what I saw, I'm sure there's problems. Um... But I was just there. We we're talking about Russia, and we're talking about the problem we're in. We're, we got a little bit of a problem now. We got a little bit of an issue because the American media, in their infinite wisdom, has been saying for the last two months that Russia has been losing the war, that Russia's a big pussy, and that everybody who lives in Russia can barely like put two hands together to fight. And the Russian military is useless, and they've been losing the war. Now, apparently, that offended Putin, the leader of Russia. Uh, And the Ukrainians are getting, like, really emboldened, which, I listen, we're all, we all want less war, right? I want less war. I don't want a nuclear war. I don't want to totally say that a nuclear war would be horrible, because I think... There are a lot of people in our country who through a lot of nice editorials, including one I talked about months on the show, were like, hey, it's a little bit of a nuclear war. It might not be the biggest deal. So I don't want to, listen, would a nuclear war have benefits? Sure. Everything has benefits. So I wouldn't want to completely write off a nuclear war as all negative. I'm sure there's positives. And the peop- and they'll explain, the defense contractors will explain to you the positives of a little nuclear reset. That's why they're just saying tactical nukes. They're using these words, tactical. It's not a big, it's tactical. It's a tactical nuke. It's a little nuke here and there, boom, boom, boom. But we're, we're on our way there because Russia wanted these two regions. They wanted Donbass and the other one. The people there are majority Russian. They speak Russian. A lot of them are sympathizers with Russia. When Zelensky came into power, which is kind of like a CIA coup, 
uh, he eliminated that the pro-Russian party. So they had no representation politically. In 2014, Putin annexed Crimea. Again, another kind of Russian region. And, you know, now we have this thing where Putin has invaded the Ukraine to prevent them from, from whatever you want to say, whether it's joining NATO or whatever, you know, they, he is basically going in there and saying, I want these regions that were Russian. They were Russian. I want them, and I don't want Ukraine to join NATO, which is expanded a bunch of times. And it's, it's you know, Ukraine's on the doorstep of Russia. He doesn't want missiles there. He doesn't want to, that's what he doesn't want, okay? Now, yeah, is Putin a great guy? No, let's go over all of the fucking uh, qualifiers here about Putin because I people are going, hey, you're, not, you're like Putin. Listen, he's a bad guy. Putin's not good. He kills people indiscriminately, or whatever. If they're a threat to him, he kills them. He murdered this journalist, Anna Politskaya, we think. But he did. Like, he does. Alexander Levchenko poisoned him with polonium. Everyone's dying now. Anyone who's ever said anything negative about the war, they're all dead. He's not a good guy. We get it. Don't mistake what I'm trying to say here. I'm not a fan of Vladimir Putin in the, in the overall, you know, appraisal of his character. What I am saying is that um, he wants certain things. Like, yes, would he like to reconstitute the Soviet Union? Sure, probably. I'm sure he would. But he, he's been very specific about what he wants in this conflict. And then the, the Ukraine and the U.S., we've been very, like, general. We've been very, like, vague and, like, very big picture. He's been like, Dunbas, the other one, find me the name of the other one, Dunbas, the other one, respectfully, I'm, you know, Dunbas, the other one, and uh, he wants that, and no NATO. And then our response is freedom. Like, that's our response. Our response is like freedom, Ukraine, Zelensky, love, nations, trans people, dance, the free, you know, future, the children. And he's been like, no, 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 Donbass and that other thing and no NATO. And then our response to that is like, here's a Ukrainian folk song and how dare you? It's like, you know, and then Zelensky the other day goes, well, I'm not, I'm not negotiating with Putin. This is one of my favorite things I've ever seen. He goes, we can have no negotiations with Putin because he's a leader with no future. It's like, who decided that? Like, he has a future in Russia. The coups did not work. He's still there. I remember in the beginning, everyone's like, the Russians will turn on him. They'll kill him. They haven't. He's still there. He has a future in Russia. So now Zelensky is calling essentially for the removal of the leader of the country that has the largest nuclear arsenal in the world. Someone in our government has to shut him up. Someone in our government has to go, you can't, you can't do this. This is not appropriate to say that Putin is a leader with no future. It, what do you, how does this w work out in everyone's head? Again, I'm not a geopolitical strategist. I'm not a genius. I'm a comedian. Uh, am I right about a lot of things? Probably. Doesn't matter. Here's the reality. How do we see this working out? Russia taking the L, walking away. Putin looking at the elites of his country and going, yeah, well, I embarrassed us all. I, we couldn't even beat Ukraine. What do you think happens to him? Then he will get killed. And he knows that. He knows if he doesn't. And then what do you think happens? Who do you think takes after uh, takes over after Vladimir Putin? He's like a like a liberal free market? No, it'll probably be an, like another authoritarian. But like they have a list of guys that could take over after Putin. There's like a list of people. Um, and if you could grab that, there's like a list of. Um, generals or whoever that would be taking Vladimir Putin's place, let's say there was a coup. None of these people watch RuPaul's Drag Race. None of these people are going to be the types of people. Like, here's some examples. So here are the potential replacements for Putin, if Putin's out. Uh, here are the progressives that come in. Uh, they include Alexander Bortnikov, Sergei Chemizov, Sergei Narishkin, Nikolai Petruskrev, Igor Sechin, and Sergei Shogo. So Bortnikov is the current head of the FSB, which is the Russian intelligence service. 
He's uh, one of Putin's strongmen. He's 70. He's a spy. He was a spy in the KGB uh, as well. And he uh, appeared on the list of those sanctioned by the EU after the poisoning of Alexei Navalny. Lovely. So that's that's one option uh, coming in. Okay. Option number two will be uh, this gentleman here. Um, and this guy's name uh, here is, let me see, it's uh, Narishkin. He's the head of the Foreign Intelligence Service, the SVR, uh, and the head of the Russian Historical Society. And he met Putin in St. Petersburg when the current president worked in the city hall. And like the other Bortnikov, he was also accused of being behind Navalny's poisoning. Number two. That is number two. It's good. These are the candidates that are lining up to replace uh, Putin. So then we have, uh, if you go up here, we have Sergei Chemizov, who is the CEO of Rostec, a state-owned defense company. Um, he met Putin during his time in East Germany. His position in charge of the Russia company has allowed him to build up a large fortune. He has several luxury yachts, some villas in Spain. Um, another key Silovark in Putin's circle is Igor Sechin, head of the state oil company Rosneft. Again, they both, well, one is Rostec, one is Rosneft. And like Chemizov, he holds one of Russia's greatest fortunes. I would feel more comfortable with the rich guys because at least they might be concerned with their own money. Um, but go up, Sergey Show You is um, one of my favorites. This is a great uh, example here. In the military sphere, perhaps replacing Putin will be Defense Minister Sergey Shogu, the military officer of Ukrainian and Tuvan origins, is a government figure who has held a high-level post since the collapse of the Soviet Union. Shogu, who's one of Putin's closest friends, uh, played a key role in the annexation of Crimea and the military operations in Syria. So those are the candidates, the uh, progressive candidates that will replace Putin and reverse the course of history in Russia. Today's episode is brought to you by True Classic. Guys, let's talk about T-shirts. Finding that perfect fitting shirt can be terrible. I swear, the thing is either way too tight, has a case of bacon neck, I don't know what that is, or just plain big and boxy. Luckily, True Classic wants to make every man look good and feel good. Tighter in the fit, chest, and sleeves to make your arms pop and room in the torso to keep things cozy. Plus, all of their styles are super soft and pocket-friendly. So, guys, no excuses. Get rid of those ratty T-shirts I know you've been hanging on to for years and get ready to upgrade. We have an exclusive deal for our listeners. We want to hook you up with some true classic. For limited time, get 25% off with the code TIM at trueclassic.com. Almost all men's T-shirts are designed to look good on a certain body type. Skinny models with six packs. But most of us aren't packing anything but a few beers. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. My dudes, it's simple. You're wearing the wrong clothes. I am now going to tell you about a time when I couldn't find a shirt that was good. One time I went to a store and I couldn't fit in any of the clothes and I was angry and sad. A friend of mine said, have you ever talked about True Classic? And I went, what? Or he'd seen it or heard of it? And I'm like, what do you mean? And he goes, well, they're more than just a T-shirt company. They have all the menswear staples you could need. They've got polos and workout shirts with the same flattering fit. Boxer brief designed to keep your boys feeling nice and comfortable. They make it super easy to build out your wardrobe, and you'll get top-notch quality for a great value. They have this pack builder on the website where you can custom bundle all of their essential products and save even more than the discount we're offering you today. Folks, get comfortable, get going, and upgrade your wardrobe with True Classic. Get 25% off at trueclassic.com with code TIM. Free shipping included on purchases over $100. 100% risk-free guarantee with a 30-day return policy. True Classic. When you look good, you feel good. Not always, but... I don't know if he's a hardliner or not. The hardliners in Russia are the ones that are like, bomb the Ukraine, bomb them back into the Stone Age. 
which they're doing. They just took out like 40% of Ukraine's uh, electrical grid. Uh, people, you, we were in Romania, and people were like, yeah, I was talking to this Ukrainian girl on Snapchat. She's gone now. Because there's no... They, but Russia's like, you keep saying we're loot, we're just going to bomb you. Maybe our military's not good on the field, but that doesn't matter. We have all the missiles. That's, that's what war is now. Everybody's like, the Russians can't even fight. It's like they don't, they have all the missiles. That's what war, war is not like, a, 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 it's not a UFC fight. They're just going to go in there and level the fucking country until these people. And Zelensky, I, I, don't, I, I don't know if he doesn't understand that or he thinks he's in a movie but there's other people too besides this guy who they they've they've basically said that like you know uh Putin if he goes some other guys step in. There's a lot of Russian hardliners that want Putin to turn up the heat and there's a lot of people that feel like he hasn't done enough yet, you know? And so he comes out after they blew up the Crimean bridge, he comes out and he just starts hitting Ukrainian infrastructure blowing them to bits, shutting it down. At that point, we should just go, it's time for a deal. It should just be deal time. Zelensky should go, it's time for a deal. Let's cut a deal. We're sorry, you're sorry. We've done things, you've done things. Let's move on. But instead of that, we are sending more money, sending more weapons, and marching towards nuclear war. We're doing nuclear war drills over the Donbass region of the Ukraine. We're, we're maybe going to nuclear war over something called Donbass that we couldn't tell this guy to give up to Vladimir Putin. It's, it's scary when you look at it. It's like actually scary. And I think a lot of people now are starting to go like, okay, like this has been a little, this has been a little much, but Putin's not taking the L. Russia's not going to take the L. Um, it's just going to be a bigger and bigger issue. So if you hear, it says Russia has eerily warned the world global carnage could ensue if Western allies of Ukraine continue to meddle in their conflict. This is from a, a, a diplomat over there. They said World War III could be sparked if the West continues to intervene and if a nuclear war was to occur, it would be, quote, catastrophic for all mankind. Should NATO approve Ukraine's bid to join a top Kremlin official threatened global destruction? Alexander Venetikov, the deputy secretary of Russia's Security Council, said Kiev is well aware that such a step would mean a guaranteed escalation to World War III. Yet NATO, no. No NATO for them. Like, it's... This shouldn't even be on the table. They're not joining NATO. They're not joining. They're out. This is like, it's, it's, you cannot join NATO. Why, I, we're going to get nuked over this. We're going to get nuked over this. Can you imagine if you're sitting in your backyard and you get nuked over this shit? Over these two fucking regions in the fucking Ukraine? They speak Russian anyway. Can you imagine if you're vaporized over this garbage? It's, it's crazy to me. That nobody's trying to calm this down. There's nobody trying to calm it down. Everybody's like, Putin's a psychopath. He's holding the world hostage with nuclear weapons. He's sick. He should be removed. And then what happens when he's gone? Like, Russia, you shouldn't poke these people and put them in a corner where the only way out of it is a nuclear weapon. Give them a path. Give them a deal. Here's Donbass. Here's Crimea. Throw in another shithole. You get this too. Give them a third thing he doesn't even want. Give him another shithole. You get that. Give him Zelensky at this point. Now this is going to get me in trouble. What if, what if the United States teamed up with Russia Fucking, because that's where we are anyway. We belong as the aggressor. We shouldn't be defending anyone or helping. Our job is to kill people and lie about it. So what we should do is just, just get Zelensky and deliver him to Putin. Deliver him to Putin. Give him Donbass and Crimea. Because we got to make a deal. And it's not everyone's going to go, well, that's crazy. He's going to be tortured and murdered. Yes, unfortunately, yes. But we do have to move on here. We've got to move on. The show is taken, the, the Ukraine show is taken up a lot of attention and no one really cares anymore. And every article now is just like, nuclear war is coming, nuclear war is imminent. Is it even, should we even stop nuclear war? Why would we even try to stop nuclear war? Let's just all get adjusted to the idea of nuclear war. Over this, over the Ukraine, 
over Dunbas. Go, go to Dunbas and hit image. And let's go all see what we're dying for. This is where we're going to die. Uh, Dunbas, Ukraine. Here it is. Let's take a nice photo of Dunbas. Let's see if there's any other photo. Can we get any other photo of Dunbas? Let's see if we could get, like, a, I, I want to give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's get a nice photo where it's like you could see, because we're all going to die over this. We might as well have, like, some type of idea. It's not, they can, there's no even photos of this. Interesting. Okay. Well, well, maybe we all die. Maybe we all die, and, uh, you know, I'm just, 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 it, it's not the move to tell this guy, Putin, that he's a loser. That's nice. Bring that up. That's a pretty photo. Look at that. It's a meadow. Okay. There it is. It looks like Austin, Texas. That looks like Lake Travis. So instead of just giving that dump to Russia, we're all going to die. That makes sense, right? So that every defense contractor in America can sneak into a private bunker when the nuclear war hits and then count money. Great. Well, what are you going to do? It's not, it's not that bad, and I'm, I, I'm sure maybe I'm overreacting about it. But, you know, you're over there in Romania. You're talking to people. They're like, yeah, Russia's not losing, and they don't have any plans to lose, and Putin's just going to unleash a holy fire and fury in hell, which he's been doing, and we're like, yeah, but did you read the piece in the New Yorker? Did you read that? The New York Times really served it up to Putin. It's like, no, guys, it, 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 I'm telling you, Putin's been very specific about what he wants. We've been vague in general. And in an argument, when someone's very specific and someone else is just kind of pie in the sky, like very general, usually the specific person kind of has the upper hand because they're going, hey, here are the things that I want. They will make this better. And you're going like, I don't even know you. It's like, that's not helpful. So instead of like all the freedom and uh, democracy stuff, just give them, just give it to them. Just give him what he wants. Give him what he wants, and it'll all be okay. Because there's no way to... Because Zelensky's so high on himself. The goal here should be less war. Not more war. It should be less. Zelensky is so high on himself that there's absolutely no way that you could see unless Russia takes a total L. So we're, we're setting up a situation where Russia has to be humiliated on the world stage. Understand what that means. Understand what it means that we are putting Russia in a position where the only outcome that we think is acceptable is if Russia is completely isolated and humiliated in front of the world. Russia, the country with the, 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 most, uh, the biggest nuclear arsenal, Russia, that country. We want them to be humiliated. We want Putin to like say sorry, do a press conference, apologize, pull troops out, admit to losing. And we think that that's going to happen. We, in our brains, in somebody's brain, they think that's going to happen. And it is not. Probably not. So I would just say we should be a little careful over there, especially speaking to like some people in Romania, some from the Ukraine, refugees, like, you know, we spoke, we spoke to a good amount of people over there. And, um, you know, I, I think everybody wants the war to end. And nobody wants it to end in like a, you know, mushroom cloud. Speaking of wars, the military is now doing this thing that it's done many times before. Recruitment in the military is off. Nobody wants to join the military right now because everybody has kind of sniffed out what's going on. Nobody really believes like anything that the government says about why the military does anything it does. So what tends to happen is when you have this like crisis, you basically have a ton of young people now that go, you know, I'll do other things. I'll get into crypto. Uh, I'll figure it out. I'll build a YouTube channel. I don't know. But nobody wants to uh, be in the military anymore. So the military is now claiming that it is woke, that it's too woke. This is what the, the response is. That's why nobody wants to join. It's not because we've seen Afghanistan and Iraq and all of these things and everybody is fed up. It's because the military apparently is too woke, meaning that when you join it, I don't know what happens. They cut your dick off or... So the Army missed its recruiting goal by about 15,000 new soldiers in 2022. 
coming up about 25% short of its goal at a time when each of the services was struggling to meet their benchmarks. Military officials worry that half, that all of the branches have had to reach deep into their pools of delayed entry applicants, which we know who that is, right? It's, you know, these are the people that really don't need to be in it. They don't add much. These are the people who we go, yeah, we'll let you in depending on how bad things get. But for now, go home. Like if you show up to the recruitment with your own battle plan drawn out and it involves your own town, they go, you go back home, keep doing stuff in the yard, do some sit-ups and push-ups in the yard, and we'll get you back when we need it. So the delayed entry applicants are like cops that I guess have been thrown out of the police force for shooting uh, black people and, you know, just the people that show up and they, you don't want to take them right away. You go, you guys just, maybe they have medical things, you know, I have I have seizures, I have that, you go, whatever. So now we're, we're going to have to start using them. Military recruiters have leaned on tried and true factors to explain the challenges, including low unemployment and a dearth of applicants up to physical, educational, and behavioral standards. Because remember, to join our military, you have to be a brilliant, good person who's never had any behavioral problems. But the truth is, I love this article, and this is from uh, Military Times, because I get it, they're trying to, you know, this is, okay. But the truth is, no one keeps detailed data on what's stopping America's youth from signing up. Yeah, I, I think people have, it's called 19 fake wars. Experts and senior military leaders point to the perennial factors of competition from the private sector and a dwindling number of young Americans, both qualified and interested in military service. But what they don't have too much information on is why the propensity is going down and whether the country is undergoing an ideological shift towards military service. One possibility, this is Senator Tommy Tuberville. A Republican from Alabama, Tommy Tuberville, has figured it out. The military is too woke. And apparently, people that want to go die in foreign countries don't want to be woke. And they're afraid that if they join the military, instead of being immediately sent to their death... They'll be made to read literature about trans people. I don't know. So Tommy Tuberville says uh, the military is too woke. For example, uh, the Republican from uh, Alabama, I believe, maybe Alaska, I think it's Alabama, for example, is among a group of Republican senators who have repeatedly blamed recruiting problems on the Biden administration for trying to build a woke army. Uh, the director of the National Defense at the Heritage Foundation, a conservative think tank, recently opined that wokeness is the, quote, chief worry of grizzled American veterans today. Is that true? Could that... <laughs> could that... Could that possibly be true? Listen to the word. Wokeness is the, quote, chief worry of grizzled American veterans today. You know... How many people get back from these wars and kill themselves because they don't have, like, you know, like, mental health care? They have suffering from PTSD. They can't be employed because they try to get a job as a security guard at McDonald's, but they're trained in the military. So no matter what happens, they start being overly aggressive, like, grabbing people, and they're like, whoa, calm down. Like, you know, but their chief problem, suicide, not it. Drug and alcohol abuse, not it. The chief problem if you are a grizzled American veteran. I love the word grizzled. Grizzled American veterans, meaning people who've seen and done things, it's like, that haunt them. They're, and their main, <laughs> wokeness is the main problem. Quote, the largest threat they see by far to our current military is the weakening of its fabric by radical progressive or woke policies being imposed not by a rising generation of slackers but by the very leaders charged with ensuring their readiness wokeness in the military is being imposed by elected and appointed leaders in the white and i don't even by the way what is the wokeness in like does this go dead does it say anything about what the wokeness is What is the wokeness? Like, if you join, like, how gay has the military gotten? Like, I, I haven't been paying attention, but, like, how woke 
is okay. In reality, service members spend hundreds of hours a year on mandatory training, covering everything from operational safety to financial responsibility and suicide and sexual assault prevention, with a tiny fraction of that focusing on diversity, equity, and inclusion education. So I'm wondering what exactly in the military is super well. I know that they're bringing in new programs, I guess. But what is, like, I I think one of them is just, like, let's keep the assault down. Because there's a lot of sexual assault. So, like, just keep it. They're cutting back on rape. Yeah. Well, that's woke. But I think that, I I don't know, is it, are they doing, like, drag shows in the middle? Like, is that, do they do drag queen story hour in the barracks? Like, do these guys have to sit through? I'm trying to, in my head, wonder, like, what exactly the woke military is. I could be wrong. By the way, if you're in the military, let me know that I could be wrong. Tell me what happened. Tell me what so offended you that was going on in the military. I don't know. Here's, wait, hold on. This is a picture of a woman. This might be getting it. Here's a picture of a woman. She's on the ground. She's wearing a COVID mask. Okay, this is heading in the woke direction. Maybe I'm wrong. This is the point in the show where I go, perhaps I'm wrong. A U.S. Military Academy uh, cadet practices physical training at the Army Combat Fitness Test during cadet basic training at West Point. Okay, so it's a woman. It's a picture of a woman, and she's... Okay. Um, But what seems to incense people is that the issue of racial disparity is discussed at all, not that it's truly cutting into time spent on training. So I guess they're doing some more like the race classes. When Marine Corps Reserve Colonel Matthew F. Amidon, Director of Veterans and Military Families at the George W. Bush Institute... Well, he did a lot for the confidence in the military. Wrote a commentary arguing that veterans, veterans to help during the recruiting process process by recommending military service to their kids and other young people. Military Times was inundated with hundreds of emails from veterans saying they would do no such thing. Their reasons are varied, but most said wokeness is to blame. (laughs) Their reasons are varied. Many of the people we sent to kill uh, people in the fake war that we didn't really pay, and were, they won't have their kids and grandkids do it, and their reasons are varied, but most said wokeness. Interesting. They accuse the military of becoming too political or a social experiment. I'll be blunt. I wouldn't encourage anyone to join today's armed forces, and I discouraged both of my sons from considering serving wrote Peter Dimas, who described himself as a third-party generation veteran. Quote, America's military leaders have been sold out, sold out the services for their own advancement and reflect all the poorest qualities of civilian leadership. Da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. But what is going on? Can you find anything about, like, an example of, like, the military going crazy with wokeness? Because... With a woke military, because because there's something, there is something here. Something's going on. Well, you know, I I think they're overblowing it. But there's something that this is based on, and I just can't, I don't know what it is. I know there's women in the military, there's gay people in the military, there's trans people in the military. So we know that. But I'm wondering what exactly is so over the top. Maybe they're just teaching these annoying classes. And it's like, you should have a a cohesive unit. You shouldn't have, like, this weird equity and inclusion. I don't even know why they're, you're all going to die, and we're sending you to die, and we don't even really know why. Soon, it's for the Ukraine. So, with a woke military who's most senior officers concerned about white rage, he's a little bit of a clown, that guy. I've seen him. He likes attention. It's that, that's that general who's always like, I want to know why white people... He's like auditioning for an HBO Max, like comedy special. He's like, I want to know why... It's just, it's this guy, I forget his name, but he's a, he's a big general and he's, he's very critical. Of, and he's like, I want to know why white people hate. I want to know why my people hate. And like, they love him. The New York Times, like everybody frames him up on the cameras. They're like, he's great. Um, so here we go. This is what they're talking about. Um... With the woke military's most senior officers concerned about white rage, searching for a tattletale process is to discover and discharge while white extremists, they want to discharge white extremists from the military, blaming it on toxic masculinity, discharging real warriors for not getting vaccinated. Disagree with that. They should not have done that. That's so stupid. Having a two-day stand down to discuss white extremism, that seems in itself extreme. 
the promotion and expansion of women in combat. Yeah, just put them in there. See what happens. Some of them will be okay. Lowering physical fitness standards to accommodate naturally weaker women. Well, you know, if you're gonna, if you want to be in the military and you're a woman, let let them in. And you, yeah, they're not going to be able to do the same things men do, but they can ki- they can kill children. Women can kill babies, right? I mean, I yeah, I don't think it's a it's a problem. Um, recruiting with social justice and diversity ads. So I don't I don't know. Listen, I get it. I get it. it. Gets a little annoying if you're you signed up in the military and you're like, listen, just let me at least here. Let me just fight and die, and don't annoy me, which I agree with. Like, stop with the the diversity inclusion. Like, everybody in the military is the same. They've all joined. Many of them didn't have other options. That they they don't have to. You don't have to divide them along the lines of race or sex or whatever you're doing. Just just. Let them all go and fight in the Ukraine. They don't have to. I don't know. Pregnant women are going to fight our wars. It's a mockery of the U.S. military. Who said that? Tucker? Tucker Carlson said that? Are pregnant women fighting in the wars? Yeah, I mean, listen, man. These fights, the, the ground wars don't work. We just saw it with Russia. These ground wars that everybody's... Nobody wants to do that anymore. Nobody, everybody's over that. People have Netflix now. They don't care. What, what... The thing that seems to matter is just missiles. Just p- pressing a button and then shooting a missile. So, I mean, I don't know that... Well, you know, if China invades Taiwan, does it really matter if the military's... Wo- I mean, are we going to go in there and fight them? No, it's going to be air, missiles, you know. I don't know. I want to talk about this story in Canada because this actually made me upset and this made me worry about... I I usually don't worry about suicide because I, you know, it's such a personal thing for most people that do it. And I, I don't get involved. You know, it's... But we don't want it. But it does happen and... You know, but I, I, it's sad. I don't know. I don't really know too many people have done it. Um, and if you're thinking about doing it, you shouldn't. Like, unless, you know, there's, there are things where you know more about yourself than I do type of thing. But for the most part, still, no. Um, but Canada now, you can literally, I don't know if you know this, you can literally kill yourself if you've had like a bad day. Like, if you've had a day that isn't good, you can just sign up for youth. Did you know anything about that? What? Do you go to a pod? Is that how it happens? But I don't know that. Well, I didn't know about the pod. But it could. Canadian mom's harrowing tale, harrowing tale, shows the real dangers of lethal euthanasia. When Margaret Marcilla found out her 23-year-old son scheduled his own death, she started her race against time. This is sad because this kid, he's diabetic. His name's Keanu. Uh, he lives with his aunt. He generally kept his business to himself. He suffers from depression, stems from his diabetes, his condition worse in the summer, creating the loss of sight in one of his eyes. So he's got shit going on. We feel bad for that. Um, Marcilla's worries for her son's well-being led her to do a little snooping. And with the help of her daughter, who had access to his Facebook and email accounts, it was then that she learned her son had sought and been approved for medically assisted suicide. Part of Canada's medical assistance in dying law called MAID, which this was like mind-blowing to me. No, the fact that they would approve somebody who has like lost their sight in one eye and has diabetes to just die at 23. That's fucking insane. Um, I understand you have late stage cancer. Hey, hey, listen, but discovering that her son had just about two weeks left to live before the procedure, Marcilla uh, began to investigate the next day. She called the doctor and pretended to be a prospective patient, describing her condition much like her son's. 
the doctor, Joshua Tepper, seemed accommodating, going so far as to offer a formal assistant, a formal assessment, which could be conducted. So it's easy. Like, if you want out in Canada, they want you out. They're, they want you out if you want out. They're not asking too many, like, you call up, you go, I'm diabetic, one eye's out, they go, let's do it. They are not pushing back at all. Not knowing what else to do, Marcella took to social media, sharing her story and seeking advice when another physician who performed the maid procedures expressed surprise that Kiana was accepted based on diabetes. A few decades ago, private citizens used to be largely that, private. What changed? The internet. Think about everything you've browsed, searched for, watched, tweeted. Now imagine all that data being crawled through, collected and aggregated by third parties into a permanent public record, your record. Having your private life exposed for others to see was once something only celebrities worried about. But in an era where everyone is online, everyone is a public figure. To keep my data private when I go online, I turn to ExpressVPN. There's hundreds of data brokers out there whose sole business is to buy and sell your data. The worst part is they don't have to tell you who they're selling it to or get your consent. One of these data points is your IP address. Data harvesters use your IP to uniquely identify you and your location. But with ExpressVPN, my connection gets rerouted to an encrypted server and my IP address is masked. Every time I turn on ExpressVPN, I'm given a random IP address shared by other ExpressVPN customers. That makes it more difficult for third parties to identify me and harvest my data. And the best part is how easy ExpressVPN is to use. No matter what devo device you're on, phone, laptop, smart TV, all you have to do is tap one button to get protected. So... If you, like me, believe your data is your business, secure yourself with the number one rated VPN on the market. Visit expressvpn.com slash Tim Dillon and get an extra three months for free. That's expressvpn.com slash Tim Dillon. Go to expressvpn.com slash Tim Dillon to get an extra three months for free. I'm trying to see if they have a number for it because there's a lot of, there's too many young people doing it. I don't know how many are doing it. There, so next year, Canadian lawmakers are expected to adjust the criteria for euthanasia eligibility to include the mentally ill and, quote, mature minors. The latter would allow underage patients to make such decisions for themselves if a doctor deems them mature enough. I don't know how that happens. So there's a new law that says underage people can elect to kill themselves if a doctor will say they are mature enough to do it. Seems like an idea that might have some issues. But the, the greatest thing ever is him and his mom get in a fight at the end of this article. They get in a, a big fight. And she literally says to him, like, I, I was just loving you. I just, you know, this is what I want to do. And he's, I forget what he said. His exact quote to her, which is so great, is like, he says, yeah, he goes, you know what I need. You know what I need. Like, his one thing was like, bitch, the one thing I wanted was to just go in and off myself in a clean medical situation. And you and your fucking Facebook friends fucked that up for me. So now I have to be alive. So it's sad. I don't know. I don't know if I'm for letting young kids kill themselves. But I guess we're going to let them make all the decisions. They're going to, like, be able to change biological parts. They're going to be able to take themselves out. Just let, you know, it's not a great, it's not a great way to run a society by letting very young people who are deemed mature, like, how is that? Somebody just makes a case for their own death, and you go, you know, they were very mature. They were respectful, and they detailed why they don't want to be here anymore. And we found it persuasive. So, and is is it a pod? Were you right? Is it a pod? Is that how you kill? Uh, I think the, pods are in Europe. the pods are in Europe. So I don't know how they do that. I think I read about this. I think it's like a lethal injection where they stop your breathing and collapse your. But it's crazy that young, like that young people would be allowed to do that. You know, Nicholas Cruz, the shooter of Parkland, uh, the Parkland. Shooting. Alex Jones, by the way, now owes a billion dollars. 965 million, some crazy number. A wild number about Sandy Hook. But this is not that one. This is Parkland. It's a different one. They both happened. Okay? Now, Parkland school shooter was spared the death penalty 
He killed 17 people. And see, this is what I don't understand. We we let a diabetic 23-year-old who has one eye and who's upset kill himself. But Nicholas Cruz will spend the rest of his life in jail. This is insane. Everyone knows, right? Chen Wang, 14-year-old shooting victim. Peter Wang's cousin yelled during a news conference after the decision was read. We need justice. I agree, Shen. Cruz, 24, pleaded guilty a year ago to murdering 14 students. I'm not laughing at this. I'm just, I'm laughing at the idea of like a guy like screaming out. People don't scream out. It's great. The three-month trial that included graphic videos and photos from the massacre and its aftermath, uh, you know, has led to the, it's, it's fucked. It's completely fucked that, I don't know. I mean, the death penalty is tough, but we all know he did it. Everybody knows he did it. You know, people want closure. They want closure and they want the guy, they want the guy to die. You can't get angry at them for that. Um, I wonder like what the jury deliberation on that was. Because you get, I, I wonder like against it, I, you might have had religious people. Doesn't seem like it. Doesn't seem like too many of the Christians would be against that. But you might have had people go, well, he's young. Maybe they said he's mentally ill. I'm trying to think what the argument would be. I guess you just, some people are morally against the death penalty. But there doesn't seem to be any issue. Like, he did do it. And everyone knows that. I think he admitted that. Didn't he admit that? Does he want to die? Maybe he wants to die like the kid in Canada. We're not letting him to spite. We're doing it to spite you. He seems like a guy that might want to die. Like he's saying, let me have it. Take me out. Most of them shoot. A lot of these people that do this shoot themselves. Um, he is not. He stayed alive and he was taken out. And kind of nicely, actually. They kind of like they swaddled him and brought him out in a blanket. Put him in the car. Rubbed him a little bit. You know, meanwhile, they, like, shot a black guy who, you know, stopped to put something in a mailbox. But Nicholas Cruz was kind of, like, treated pretty, pretty well. Um, I wonder if any of the Parkland kids came out, like, did David Hogg or did any of them come out and comment on this? Did any of them? I used to follow one of them on social media, but it was just, it got very, it got very, like, oh, boy, enough, enough. What's David? Is he tweeting about Ukraine? If David, David Hogg is tweeting about the Ukraine, I'm going to throw this microphone at the fucking TV. If David Hogg is an expert at all on the Ukraine, I'm going to go insane right now. We're looking at his Twitter feed, and to his credit, I have not seen any Ukraine. I haven't seen any Ukraine. I, I, I got to be honest. I'm pretty impressed. I'm pretty impressed. He's sticking to guns. He's sticking to his thing. He's taking some shots at Alex. We get it. Okay, hey, man. I got to be honest. David Hogg. No Ukraine. Good job. You're welcome on the show anytime. I, uh, you know, yeah. Okay, I'm pleasantly surprised. I, I thought, and I'm sure if we went deeper, you'd find it, but I don't even want to. I just want to, let's just, let's let it, let's let it be a beautiful moment where David Hogg is just taking his time and going, you know, because he's got, he doesn't have to do the Ukraine. There's a lot going on. Alex just got hit with a billion dollars and there's gun stuff. There's, there's, you don't, you know, he's doing the climate. He's on that, he's on that beat. He just doesn't have to do the Ukraine. I'm just, I'm just angry about the Ukraine because I can't fathom. I don't know where this passion came from. It is nice to Dunbas. We see Dunbas again. It is beautiful. Um, but, you know, yeah, there it is. I mean, it's Austin. That's literally Austin Tech. They look the exact same. Give it back. Give it back. Let Putin have it. Do not, do not go to a nuclear war over this. Do not say he's losing and uh, stop saying that, like, you know, and then there's all these articles like, well, what will we do if he fires nukes? Will we fire? It's like, hey, 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 
fucking give him the give give him what he wants. I, I hate to say this. It's gonna make me sound crazy right now. And people are gonna get very angry at me. Angrier than 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 than, than, than maybe is is they like you know, if they're not listening fully, listen to what I say here. Listen to what I say. And and understand and and try to understand what I'm saying here. If we go to nuclear war, we may be the reason. We may be the reason we go to nuclear war. I'm telling you, it's 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 strange. I'm not a Putin apologist. I'm not a Putin fan. I don't think he's swell. But I will tell you this, if we end up in a nuclear war at this point, after kind of seeing what I've seen, it seems like we may be the reason that we go into nuclear war, which maybe some people want. Maybe some people want. People are like, ah, well, maybe people want it. Maybe people are just so, because you know, we've only set up one outcome here, and the only outcome is like Zelensky and Madonna and Beyonce are just dancing on Putin's grave. Like, we've only put one pathway to a victory, and that victory is that Ukraine gets everything they want, Russia's humiliated, and the United States does some, like, t- t- Twitter party where we all just fucking smack Putin down, and, y- like, that's the only way that this works out, you know, in, in the way that we have set everything up. That's the only way that this works. So, you know, I'm just saying... For everyone involved, which is, again, anyone that's alive, anyone that's currently breathing, G7 demands Russian withdrawal from Ukraine pledges continued support. In a speech to the group of seven leaders, Zelensky, Volodymyr, I say that so well, Volodymyr, Volodymyr, Zelensky called for more air defense after a second day of Russian attacks on civilians. See, this is, again, we're just ratcheting this up. The group of seven nations on Tuesday committed themselves to continue supplying Ukraine's urgent requirements for military equipment and demanded that Russia, quote, completely and unconditionally withdraw all of it. <laughs> you know. Hey. Yeah, just completely and unconditionally withdraw all of its troops and military equipment from Ukraine, including Crimea and the annex room. Right. So there's that. There's that. Op- there's option one where Russia's humiliated on the world stage in a, in a massive public humiliation of Vladimir Putin, then is killed by the elites of Russia who um, replace him with, like, I don't know, some type of, like, trans-friendly, body-positive leader, or we're, we're going to have a nuclear war. It's going to be it's going to be a nuclear confrontation. So it's one of the two. Russia takes the L, they walk out, they go, eh, yeah, sorry, ah, we tried. We do suck. We are bitches. We are stupid bitches. Boy, was that a miscalculation. Like, Putin gets out and goes, hey, I, I thought it would be easier, but guess what? We're bitches, and we fucking lost, and the U.S. is fucking dope. They didn't fight, but they sent the fucking, oh, no, they didn't fight. They didn't do that, but they sent arms to the Ukraine and they put Zelensky on the covers of all of their magazines and they wiped all the neo-Nazi Ukraine stuff from social media because there was a lot of that. And they got all of that and then they they said, I was a crazy motherfucker because I am. I'm a crazy bitch. Putin goes, I'm a crazy bitch. And that's why I am leaving the Ukraine. I'm sorry. Join NATO. Join it. In fact, we're joining NATO. Putin goes, Russia's joining NATO. We're disarming. We're turning all of our nukes over to NATO. We're joining NATO. Or nuclear war. I don't know. What's more likely? That or a nuclear exchange? What seems to be more likely? A, 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 a Putin just having a fucking aneurysm and then turning around and going, yeah, we're, you know, we were wrong. We actually welcome NATO. We welcome the Ukraine. And listen, remember, when this started, people got mad at me because I had that comic on it. And you're like, you don't understand. It's more complicated. And I'm like, sure it is, but it's a war. And here's a young guy whose life's been turned upside down. He's a comic. And he ended up being very good looking. We had him on the show. And people were mad at me. They're like, you. And I, I never said that, like, 
there wasn't some blame with NATO or what. I was just saying the war itself sucks. And any war sucks because people are dying. But the more and more this has gone on and the lack of interest we have in forcing any type of deal, like we have no inch, like nobody, like none, like zero, like none. Like Putin's like tried to make deal. We're like, fuck you, bit. Like there's been zero interest, none. More arms, more arms, no deals. Another cover for Zelensky, Vogue. How about this? I'll take half of Crimea. Vanity Fair, cover, Zelensky. Uh, we'll do Donbass and we'll have the Crimea. Fuck you, Zelensky's at the Oscar. Like there's been zero interest in trying to save people's lives. Like no interest from our country. We just don't care. We're, we're, we like, we print the money, we spend it on weapons, people get rich. I get that. But now it's time to cut the shit. We've had our fun. We've wetted our beak with a war in Europe with whites. And now it's time to roll it back and give Putin what he wants. And I'm telling you, and I know people are going to, they'll clip it. They'll be like, you suck. You're an apologist. Just for the, for the simple fact that I don't want the world to end, I would just let's start dealing with the specifics of what Putin wants, which is like, a couple of shitty regions and no NATO. Nobody's, there's no more NATO. Nobody's getting in NATO anymore. Let's, there's no more NATO. Nobody's getting in NATO. That's it. And I'm not a Putin apologist. I, 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 I think he's mean, but like, tr- like really, but I would say that it might be time to just, you know, we've got problems here. Does anyone want to die? When this started, did anyone think we would die over this? Did anyone, did that cross anyone's mind when this started that we might die over this? Did that go through anyone's head when you heard this? Did you go, ooh, this is going to end in our, in our fiery death? No. So let's just start to work, please, to ending this, which no one wants to do. Nobody seems to want to do it but it's literally the only humane and moral thing to do by allowing both parties to leave with a little dignity here and the all or nothing attitude is probably just going to lead to a real big problem unless Putin has just an about face and does what he, what he wants, you know, or, or I'm sorry, does what we all want him to do, which would be nice. I'm not against that, but he's not going to do it. And if they kill him, they're going to put in, like, Sergei Shogu or there's other fuckers over there that I've read about. They're not exactly uh, daisies. They're going to come in there, and they're also... Some of them want him to just start firing away right now. Like, some of the hardliners, when he did this, were like, more. Now. So I think we all just have to realize that, like, you know, this is not worth dying over. I feel bad for the citizens of the Ukraine. I feel bad for them. I feel bad for them. I understand that it sucks. I feel bad for some of the Nazi people who, you know, because some of them are Nazis there and it's not good, but I even feel bad for them because I'm mature. And I go, that's got to suck. You're just a young Ukrainian Nazi. In America, you can be a young Nazi and like you get over it. You eventually get a girlfriend, it comes, you know, whatever. But you're just a Ukrainian Nazi, and then all of a sudden, missiles and the house is done. America, you can get over being a Nazi. You join a whatever. You know, you you, you go to rehab, or you fucking get into the punk scene, but the Nazi punk scene, and then eventually, like, you you get into the other punk scene that goes, we're not really affiliated with that, and you still throw your life away, but it's, you know, it's more musical. I don't know. So I feel bad for everyone involved here, but I'm just saying it's it's time now to cut it out. It's time to cut out. Like, we've had enough. We've done enough, and um, we appreciate it. So we'll see everybody next week if we can. Interesting episode on the Patreon with Andrew Tate, who is the much maligned uh, uh, Romanian leader of the Manosphere that we had on, who was a lot of fun. Him and his brother, we went and we had steaks. I mean, they wanted, they, they were going to Dubai, but they said, if not, we could hunt bears in Transylvania. Kind of alluring. We want it, you know, we'll, we'll go back. We'll be back to Romania, but, you know, again, he's, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's really fun on the uh, Patreon, and he's, you know, I mean, again, people are not going to love everything he says, but he, he comes across very reasonable, and um, 
So we have him on, and he speaks, you know, uh, about this too. But if there isn't a nuclear war, we'll see you next week. If there is, we're going to Skank Fest, doing a lot of shows there. We're getting Nick Mullen and Lewis Gomez together for an old reunion of Bastard Radio, which we will then hopefully put out as an episode as well. Love those guys. We'll see them soon. Uh, thank you, everybody. And again, encourage your elected leaders. Call them tonight and tell them to stop supporting the Ukraine. Call your elected If you want to live, call your congressmen, call your senators, and tell them that it's time to stop. Stop it now. We've done enough. It's fine. We've made our point. Just call your congressmen, call your senators, and say, hi, how are you? Is this... Uh, is this the office of uh, Joan, whoever these people are? And go, listen, we got to stop supporting Ukraine. This is Betty from Flint, Michigan. And I'm telling you right now, we're, we got to stop this shit because there's going to be a nuclear fucking war over the Ukraine. What the fuck is going on? Um, but all right, we will see everybody soon. Good night. <laughs>